Hello, my name's Vicky and I'm one of the Clinical Teaching Fellows here at Swindon Academy. Today I'm going to demonstrate examination of the cardiovascular system. My patient today is Tim. Hi Tim. Hi. Pleased to meet you. Is it alright if I examine your cardiovascular system? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Right, Tim, if I could start by having a look at your hands. Thank you. Could you just put two fingernails together for me like that, please? Thank you. And if you could just turn your palms over. That's lovely. Thank you very much. I'm just going to take your pulse now. Do you ever feel the other pulse as well? Sure. That's lovely. Have you got any pain in your shoulder? No, I don't. I'm just going to lift your arm right up into the air. In aortic regurgitation, incompetence of the aortic valve means the blood pushes back down into the left ventricle during diastole. In severe AR, this may result in a rapid downstroke of the pulse when the arm is held high above the heart. Be careful, therefore, to not overinterpret simply feeling the pulse as a sign of AR. There are many other eponymous signs which can very occasionally be seen in aortic regurgitation. That's lovely, thank you. I'm just going to have a feel for the pulse up here. And at this point, I would usually take the blood pressure. Next, I need to have a look at your neck. Can I just turn your face very slightly to the left? That's lovely, thank you. The JVP is often a difficult sign to appreciate. Asking the patient to turn their head to the opposite side involves contraction of the sternocleinomastoid muscle, which in turn can make the JVP even harder to see. If you passively move the patient's head slightly to the left by the chin to expose the neck, this allows easier interpretation of the sign. At 45 degrees, the JVP should be no more than 4 centimetres above the sternal angle. The abdominal jugular reflex may help elicit the JVP. Pressing over the abdomen increases venous return to the heart, transiently increasing the right atrial pressure and therefore the JVP. This will also help differentiate a venous from an arterial pulsation in the neck. Lovely. Now I just need to feel the pulses in your neck. As aortic stenosis becomes increasingly severe, the pulse becomes slow rising in character. Lovely. Next, I do need to have a look in your eye. And can I also look in your mouth? Sure. Thank you. If you just open your mouth for me. And if you could lift your tongue up to the roof of your mouth. That's lovely, thank you. Next, I need to have a good look at your chest, if that's all right. And I'm going to have a feel for your heartbeat as well. The apex beat is normally felt in the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. It can be difficult to feel in patients with obesity and COPD, 
If it is initially impalpable, make sure to feel further laterally. you take a breath all the way in and then all the way out and then hold it there. By asking the patient to hold their breath in expiration you minimise the amount of lung between the patient's heart and your hand. In a pronounced RV heave you may see your elbow move at the same time as feeling the heave with your hand. A heave is the sensation of your hand being lifted off the chest by a particularly forceful cardiac contraction. It is caused by ventricular hypertrophy or dilatation. That's lovely and breathe normally. Next I'm going to listen to your heart. It's okay if I feel your pulse at the same time. I also need to listen in your neck if that's all right. If you could hold your breath for me. And breathe normally. And when you're ready, hold your breath again. If you hear a murmur, clarify timing by palpating a central pulse. That's lovely, thank you. Next, I need to ask you to roll to the left. Accentuating manoeuvres such as asking the patient to roll to the left or to sit forward with breath held in expiration help you to hear the quieter diastolic murmurs that might otherwise be missed. These manoeuvres bring the heart closer to the chest wall. Mitral stenosis is an increasingly rarely heard murmur. It is a low-pitched, rumbling, mid-diastolic murmur often following an opening snap and is usually only heard in the mitral area. Thank you. I'm just going to feel for the pulse in your neck at the same time. That's lovely, thank you. And for the next part of the examination, I need you to sit forward, if that's all right. OK. Um, and if I could just have your wrist so I can feel your pulse again. And we're going to do that breathing manoeuvre again. Aortic regurgitation is an early diastolic murmur. It is loudest at the left sternal edge as the blood rushes back down into the left ventricle because of the incompetent valve. The causes of aortic regurgitation include infective endocarditis and aortic dissection. So if you could take a breath all the way in and all the way out and just hold it there. And breathe away. And then when you're ready, take a breath all the way in and all the way out and hold it there. That's lovely, thank you. And while you're sitting up, I'm just going to have a listen to your lung bases as well. If you could take a deep breath in and out and again in and out. I'm just going to press on the base of your back. If you rest yourself back down, I'm just going to finish off by having a look at your ankles. Thank you, Tim. As I complete my examination, I would like to dip the ear in and do fundoscopy. <laughs>